Hi, my name is Steve Clapham and I'd like to talk to you about Accounting Red Flags, the fifth in our series of videos, and we're going to look this time at related party transactions. And related party transactions are always quite tricky because if you have a lot of related party transactions, it means that there may be something going on where the management of the business, the insiders are doing something to advantage themselves and disadvantage you as a shareholder. And as a consequence of that, I say, one of the first things you should do when you open a set of accounts is check the related parties note. Because if that related parties note is very long, lots of transactions, or involves very large sums, then perhaps you should move on. It's not that there's necessarily something wrong, but how do you know? So I prefer to look at companies which are engaged in transactions with third parties rather than related parties. I'm going to show you two examples. And the first example is a company that isn't doing anything wrong. But the related party note, if you didn't read it, you would get a very false impression of the profitability of this excellent business, Fundsmith, run by Terry Smith, running between 10 and 20, $20 billion. It, it, it might actually be close to $20 billion now. Um, last time I looked, I think it was 16. And asset managers are an inherently highly profitable business because you don't need much capital and you don't need many people, especially if you run a business like Terry's. So let's look at Fundsmith. Here's the PL, and you can see the business turned over $165 million in the year to March 2019, which is the last filed accounts. And you can see that it only made 26 million of profit. Now, if you didn't look much further, if you didn't dig deeper, you think, hmm, okay, but not stellar. But, you know, it's still a pretty profitable business. But when you start to look into it, you might then say, okay, well, how many people does it employ? And you can see here that they only employed 22 people, apart from the partners. And you can see that the highest paid member, partner, took home 16 million pounds in the last in, in, the, in the last financial year that was under review. Now that could be Terry or it could be one of his colleagues. You wouldn't necessarily know, but you would assume that it would be the, it would be the founder. And that doesn't sound like much, 10% of the turnover, does it? But let's look a bit further. The business only had 8.7 million of, of employee costs. But look at the end. Note 15, the very last note, has got related party transactions. And that tells you that an entity known as Fundsmith Investment Services Limited was charged £116 million last year. That's quite serious money, right? And when you look in company's house, there isn't that entity doesn't exist. But if you dig deeper, you actually find that Fundsmith Investment Services Limited is incorporated in Mauritius. And that's where Terry Smith now lives. Quite nice, isn't it? The idea of living in a beautiful island with nice weather, certainly nicer weather than London, and probably COVID free. You can see here that the fees to the Mauritius entity are by far the largest component of the cost base. And this explains why that 43 million increase in sales led to only a 5 million increase in profit to only 26 million. Because Terry, presumably, I presume it's Terry, is behind this related party and he's collecting his income instead of taking it as a partner in the LLP in the UK, where he'd be subject to 40% tax and national insurance. He's taking it in Mauritius, where the top rate of tax, I believe, is 15%. And good luck to him. But if you hadn't looked at that related party note, you could have got quite a false impression. So always read the related party note. The second example is Samsonite. And you can see here that this is just one part of the related party transactions. This is item D. There's a whole long list of related party transactions in the case of Samsonite. And that was because the company was engaged in a lot of transactions with the chief executive. It was later transpired that the chief executive had lied about his CV. He claimed that he had a PhD. He didn't have one. He'd gone to Cincinnati University, never graduated. And he ended up being having been forced to resign. 
But Samsonite's a good example of one of these companies where there's a lot of related party transactions and it's very difficult to know what's really going on. So when you're looking at a set of accounts, one of the first things to do is check the related party note and if it looks very long or if there's a lot of money involved, maybe you should think about picking another stock to investigate because there may be some issues that you can't resolve. But always check the related party note. It's a very good test and it's one of the key accounting red flags. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next video in the series.